catch all the repeats and record your favourite show even when you have to go out because with Sky TV the future of digital entertainment is already here Sky believe in better de vierde winter zanskar en nog daar down en doldra vechtjaan la hoorde gleig. A tak koni er ho agree lor na himalehe. Tree vila meter oos kuhn leve in nefarige. Ach er dus korsi kjoel er shema leach. from the time I was about five years old. There was always Irish music in the house, either from a, a record player or radio, something. And uh, every Sunday there was a live radio program out of Boston. And on that program, a regular on that program was this Jerry O'Brien, Melodian player. And he came from Kinsale in Cork. And Jerry played live almost every Sunday on this program. And from what my parents told me, no matter where I was in the house or whatever I was up to, as soon as the accordion would start playing, I'd just come running and jump up and down in front of the radio as long as the accordion was playing, and as soon as he stopped, that was it. But uh, it seems to me that the accordion was like a magnet for me. Couldn't quite get enough of it. Rukuk Joe Durand got her vast in Najag Trucha, the Vona Aranok, but on O Inish Vor Aran Ahar, August O Kondiruska Kamoin Avoher, August Kultor Ban on Vert, Hien on Tahar, Er on Melogen, August August Hien on Vaher, Er on Vigil, so Vion Kuvalega on Gleawine. I drove my parents crazy, and at one point, I guess, they finally conceded that they have to do something, or uh, God knows. Uh, what they did was they called the radio station and they contacted this Jerry O'Brien, and uh, they got a little 10 row melodion for me, and Jerry agreed to come to the house and give me lessons. This would be just about... Say I was about age ten. That would uh, put it at about 1940. August far on similar fad about Jerry O'Brien. Corky uh, Akubahe a hanig gudi and stayte into his nefihdi rather rin and the milch and the kate the milch. August kultori and the masker noig. August hasshe shenim le banakol der banim or Leary's Irish minstrels got her Boston. Joe was playing his music, you basically had the option of playing in either pubs or rough dance halls, where at the very best, you were considered a good rhythmic player uh, for the purpose of accompanying dancing, or uh, a good lively player that would be appreciated in the noise of a bar. So Joe uh, grew up and learned his music at, at, in one of the worst eras for Irish music, in, in the history of Irish music in America. Street was the place. Uh, it's been called the crossroads of Celtic culture in Boston. Um, Joe was part of that. Um, that dance scene was something that we can only imagine. 
seven, eight, nine hundred people in a hall, five or six halls between Dudley Station and up to O'Connell Hall up on up past Dudley Street and Washington Street. Um, amazing. And you'd walk down the street and you'd hear strains of Irish music, you know, from from the north, from the south. You'd hear Cape Breton music, you'd hear the French Canadian music. Um, that whole scene was just that was that was popular culture. That's where people went to feel a sense of home. That's where they went to uh, to hear familiar sounds. involved in music from the very first time I met him. But he also uh, had a day job. He was a manager of the MBTA in Boston, but he worked three or four nights a week. And on the weekends, he was very rarely at home. He would do two or three weddings on a Saturday and again on Sunday. And so it was music all the time. In this building here, and it's still here, my God, but I don't know if they use it. This was the old Rolls Croy, where all the Canadians used to go and the Cape Breton people. And over there with that bluish and white thing, that would have been Winslow Hall. And 50 yards down from that, it would have had the Dudley Street Opera House. And somewhere in between here would have been Hibernian. My God, and Warren Street is where O'Byrne DeWitt had his store. Right, right down the street there on the left. Octoration on Hogig, Timpeler, Dadashe, Dadashak, Hosig on on Chunskel, Kernini, Egyart, Erisht. Agus, we differed more more on on Tamsha. Shakas na Kernini more or na na Kolakti more, but Victor Agus Columbia Agus Deck Decker via Rams na Fihdi is na Trukadi Hanig Kolakti Bjuga Chantasig Agus vi Kolakt a wine a Boston the Auburn Dewitt Record Company took a care of those Copley in the Egyptian Agus vi Jerry O'Brien Farsha ag Auburn don Kolakt Shin Agus the Yorkshire a Moina and Cardin Ignam Gianna. So um Hula and Faravi Aganis er Holok Kapli Shin Justice or Burn to it, Hula Shay Joe Agus uh Jerry Shenam Likela Eron Radio, Agus uh Harry Shay uh Conra uh Tafada Dun Vert. So Hosi Jerry O'Brien or those Rin Shay Nikair Nikid uh Kernini a her Kapli a mock Agus uh Via Galta on on Railt the Galta via uh, Joe Duran how did she shoot in in a yig? gramophone at the time, you know, and uh, I was trying to find out what Joe was, was doing, so I used to turn down the, 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 the speed, and I could, I could see his name, Joe Duran, on, on the record, but I had no idea, particularly those roles. I couldn't just figure out, I couldn't figure that out on, on the fiddle at all, well, you know, I was only learning myself, but I would just... Just totally amazed at what, what was coming out of that accordion, because I had never heard accordion playing like that before in my life. I was a big man in Chicago, I was a big man in the world, I was a 70 years old, I was a big man in the world, 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 I was a big man in the
Buskador by Mahenegus, we do them, and Buskador Yelly, as Cluck George ran. Well, Chris, the Shiminta, with Chapas Grim Steed by Rahagia, a whole again, the new as we say, strong chair home coma. Well, and Steely beats on us in Aden, now and Steely Busco bid Shanaville, you know, push and pull up with us. Horse all of us fall and faster, made into all the Chapas. I guess I say swing we get, says right time, swing we get. Is a niche hock jog, is a false air a man school, high school, nor a rinishay a naked a kernin, her shay mock, the wish an ogre fad, rinishay temple er shay a hev deog, leshain, rinishay temple je tev ella, a shenum le, le Jerry O'Brien, a vian vertica part chuck a gaher togokan Irish all stars or her vv. George uh, Duran, Trehar, uh, Joe, Farah Henock, Aaron uh, Mancho, Lo, August uh, Farrell, Aaron Biano, John Connors, August uh, the uh, Joe Duran part of Lesh, um, uh, a trio, the Joe Duran trio, Achamad, Cole, Lesh, and Arani, Tluchuk, Connie Foley, Kiriok, the Arame, Arisht, Sna, Sna Kagadi, Sna, Sna Shaskadi. Joe's music in our house, that was when my mother would be cleaning the house. It wasn't like guest music, you know. It wasn't company music. It was every day, if you were washing the dishes, if you were cleaning, cleaning the house, if you were doing anything. It was Joe Duran's records that were on. So I was pretty small. It was probably before I actually started playing. I might have started playing, say, uh, maybe seven or eight years old. So it was kind of even, it was before that I was listening to Joe. Joe was it. strong the Irish community was here in the United States but the fact that it was Irish traditional music that was being recorded at that time I guess that's a testament to the strength of Joe's music but uh, Joe, Joe, Joe recorded 78s from what what I what I uh, what he was telling me there and it was right then that the 45s and the 33s were starting to to come in. You know, so I guess that might have been, what, 50, 1957, 1958, through about the 60s, and all of a sudden, gone. Wouldn't it be reassuring if you always had access to your dental records wherever you travelled? Well, at Smiles Dental, we now use the latest cloud technology to store your records in your own secure virtual file, which you can access from anywhere in the world should you need to. It's just another way that Smiles Dental is changing the face of Irish dentistry at our growing network of clinics across the country. Smiles Dental, for healthy confidence. This ad for Smiles Dental was made with the support of AIB. I will always be too young to be grey. Excellence creme from L'Oreal. Sensational colour that helps to triple protect before, during and after. No greys. Rich, natural looking colour. Excellence by L'Oreal Paris. And now try our natural blonde collection. With up to €100,000 to be won instantly <gasps> and the chance to win half a million euro on the TV game show Surprise yourself with a winning streak scratch card from the National Lottery. HMS Sovereign of the Seas. Build this stunning quality replica model. Issue 1 is at Newsagents now with your first magazine and parts. All for just $2.50. The Kosk Achor Er Imrakig O'Aaron. So the the Nehimrakig Dull Elide, the the Hernig Fane of V, Owen Hannah Fane, the Dolomacadina Brook, Balta, August Huig, Nahali Dosa, August on Sail 
the cold for a vian chain a lar vast and hanishe con der no kushe lake of his fuyera hanishe con derig. Now, all during this time, I was playing the ballroom scene regularly. And of course, this was a big part of my income. And then ultimately, it seems like the very late 50s, or probably the early 60s, might be a little more accurate. Seems like overnight, the whole scene just just changed. Out of all those ballroom things that we played and the thousands of people that went through those doors all over Dudley Street, the, the whole ballroom scene kind of uh, fell in upon itself. So I, I think Joe was eventually faced with a decision, you know, especially when the dance hall scene started to, to die out in America, and it died out in, in, in New York in the 30s. It died out in other cities at different times, but eventually it died out completely in all the cities, Philadelphia, Boston, Chicago. Uh, and and uh, he, he would have had to make a very practical decision. What am I going to do with my music now? And it, in, in retrospect, looking at it, it was a very ethical decision. Uh, for him to, uh, to 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 give up this music because there was nowhere for to, there was nowhere to play. I went whole hog then into piano accordion and to get myself a decent instrument that I could go out and work with. I sold my button box and I wound up doing a lot of Latins, a lot of jazz, uh, swing, show tunes, a little bit of um, Italian work and a little bit of Polish work. Somewhere in there, 1980, 83, uh, piano accordion lost its appeal, its commercial appeal. Nobody wanted it. And even when I tried to play a few Irish tunes on piano recording, people didn't want to buy it. They said, well, why are you playing the piano recording? Where's your button box? And uh, eventually I had to give up the piano recording because I, I, I wasn't working. Nobody wanted the piano recording. So I had to make a, yet another transition, and I went to uh, electronic keyboards, synthesizers. And I stayed doing that until around 1990-1989. And uh, my son and I formed a band, my son Joe, who's a great musician. We called the group Nightlife. But then uh, we wound up doing, you know, from just weddings and parties and dances, we wound up in a very, very smart supper club down here in the South Shore. And this was great for about two years. And then all of a sudden, they sold the place. There we were. <laughs> And I said, oh, God, I can't go through this again. I, I, just, I just can't face this again. People hear those recordings. Uh, I assumed when I heard his recordings that he was a much older man and that he was long gone and that we, you know, wouldn't it have been great to be able to sit in a room with him and play a tune. And it's like a dream come true, getting to know him and being able to sit in a room and play with him. Hanshe Rash, Dash Arik Shay, a Ray Nua Ella, Nurata Dram Nua. Talk of Gontosig, Dramatai, Coma Kyol, it was so quaint to Ella Thal Talk, Doc. Come Shahin Kyol, Peter Feeney's dream, Mar Hampla, August Eganurshin, um, Insna Nakaraka, Society Anta, the Galor Kyol Gaelok, Agoma, Er Mu Er Vunda, Tradishunta, so the Edri via Philadelphia, August Galor Lor Ella, a Coma Kyol, August Rancho, a Shinandina, Nelehan de Shaw. Is o verica honishe, is o haraka verica honishe, agus is asna nadahadi, isna nakayabadi honishe.
course, they sent me some courtesy copies of that CD, you know, that Rigo did, and I used to listen to those, and I said, my God, I could never play like that again. I wasn't even going to try. And besides that, I didn't have a button box. Uh, Joe Duran was contacted by the people who were running the uh, big Irish festival uh, in Wolf Trap, and Mike Denny was one of the, the main organizers, and uh, Mike Denny and myself talked, and, and uh, and, and Mike told me that, that he was going to invite Joe Duran, and uh, he did. I think he contacted Errol Hitchner, uh, who was, uh, is a music critic for, for the Irish Echo. I think Errol contacted uh, Joe. And I saw this as a fitting way, the, the best way for me to really put the cap on my career. You know, one last time, just for old time's sake, or the last glide across the dance floor, whatever way you want to say it. came back to the music um, the first time being at the Wolf Trap Festival. Our children were there and they were amazed to hear what he could do on this little box. They had never heard him before. Now, I always heard growing up that my dad made all these records and everything and it was, that was a great thing to know. I love you. But to actually like physically see it, it was it was like, you know, meeting a part of my father for the first time that I never even knew. There were about twelve hundred people in that tent, and I would say at least a thousand of them were crying, including me, my wife, and my daughter, and all kinds of people. It was the, one of the most emotionally intense things that I've ever experienced. <laughs> When he appeared in Wolf Trap, he was the sensation of the festival. And, and uh, you know, it, it's almost an, an index of that to this day. I can't remember who else was at that festival. I can't remember who I played with myself at that festival. All I remember is Joe Duran. And there was no way that Irish musicians were going to allow Joe Duran to go back home again and spend another X number of years, you know, playing at home or not playing at all. No, uh, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't going to be allowed to happen. It has changed his life and mine. He has done so much traveling. He's enjoying it so much. We both are. And uh, the children are just so proud of him. And so am I. He's a fantastic husband and father and friend. And um, I think he'll play for as long as he possibly can. <laughs> I suppose the easiest way for me to say it is when I do get the chance to go to Ireland, it's not so much like I'm visiting Ireland, it's almost like I'm going home. Now, that's a strange thing because, you know, this is my home, and uh, I don't get that feeling, of course, anywhere else. So uh, I don't know, but uh, maybe that stems from my childhood dreams of Ireland or what, I, I really don't know. I don't examine it, I just accept it and go with it. And this really was driven home because uh, when I did the Galway Arts Festival in 95, they set up a special concert for me out on in, uh, Inishmore in Holleronan. And uh, this is where I met some people who remembered, you know, my father's family, and God, it was gorgeous. Joe. Joe. Yeah, this Joe was my father. <laughs> okay. I didn't know your father, but I knew your uncles. Which one? Um, Cole? Uh, jo Cole and uh, George. Cole and George, yeah? Yeah. That was lovely. Welcome home. Wonderful. I don't knock my head off. So, when I play with Joe, uh, and rather than competing with Joe, I like Joe to be out front, and I just play 
the basic tune, but sometimes he's, he's, he's so intuitive, he, he sort of brings you into the music and you feel like you want to do the things that he's doing, at least try to do the things that he's doing. When, when you're just playing and trying to lay back, because he's so creative, all of a sudden you find yourself trying to do the things that, that Joe is doing as well. a kind of a mode that I, I try to get into uh, and I don't get there all as often as I would like but every so often uh, everything is just working it's just it's effortless it's just it's just there and I and I tend to shut my eyes especially when that happens and there may be 800 or a thousand people there but when I get if I'm successful in getting into that mode it's like getting inside the music, becoming, it's, it's, it's a strange thing, I, I suppose. It, it may sound a little strange, and some people might say, my God, is he weird, but no, uh, the musicians especially, I think, will understand. Uh, you kind of become one with the music, at least I do, and I don't, it just doesn't happen all that often. When it does, it's wonderful. Uh, there's nothing but me and the box and the music. cautious about going back to play since he had been away from it for so long but I remember that day so well at the Wolf Trap Festival he got on stage and after he played the first tune he was there and he's been there ever since Degree Lorna Himalaya, Erdown and Dulra, Fekian Kupla Nomad.